what a sad fate destiny reserved for me. I, who have seen all the wonders of the world, now find myself imprisoned in Genoa to pay for the defeat suffered in the naval battle at the Cozola Islands. Peace between the Venetians and the Genoese will take a long time, I am sure. Upon arriving in Venice, my father discovered that my mother was dead, and it was just me, Marco, waiting for him. I was 15 at the time. After the death of Pope Clement, he waited for two long years for the election of the new Pope to give him the letter of Kublai Khan. But tired of waiting, he decided to go back to China. And together with my father and my uncle, I left too. my father and watch the people we met with interest, being careful not to bump into them. violently attacked the people in the caravan, killing them and raiding everything. Fortunately, we managed not to be seen, but that cruel view left us petrified and even more aware of how risky our journey was. Sorrowful, we resumed our journey among the sandy dunes. <laughs> in the distance a group of men on horseback heading straight for us. Stay still and don't do anything foolish, my father firmly ordered. They are Saracen soldiers. was the Simun, cried my Uncle Matteo. The warm wind that fills the lungs with sand and suffocates little by little. Maybe, said Niccolò, but we can't be sure. We will not take water from this well because it could be poisoned, and we will continue to the next oasis with the few supplies we have. and we decided to camp for the night. Made 
little progress, immersed in that cloud of sand, when all of a sudden, very fast, ghostly figures began to appear and disappear among terrible shouts. They were the Karauna, the fearful predators of the desert. And he pointed to a point towards the rocks. There is the castle of the old man of the mountain, the assassin's chief. man was a powerful man, as well as a ruthless criminal. As described in the Quran, he possessed a wonderful garden in which young men chosen by him tried all pleasures of life who would lose the fight. But it did not happen. Once again, the princess won, and after having finally landed the contender, she resignedly stared at her father while Kazar got up with difficulty and retired humiliated. we would be accompanied to the nearby Shangdu, the emperor's summer residence. of the empire sat around, and in the centre, on a magnificent throne, he sat, the supreme master, Kubla Khan. Before I left, Kubla told me that my spirit of observation would be very useful to him and that he had already thought of an assignment for me. canes and golden road banners, I saw drapes and curtains disappear, while flags, carpets and painted panels were folded. An entire city disappeared in rapid order. it to Kubla Khan, thus restoring to him, among drum rolls and trumpet blasts, the power he had been given during his absence. This man was Hamad. the dances, 
the gymnastic exercises, the competitions between wrestling champions, and finally, the great red and green dragon rose, sparkling with cascades of fireworks. Raid. Some peasants had hidden rice and wheat that they had to give as a tribute. And now they were paying the deception with the destruction of their village. for our soldiers left alone to die on that island. My sentence for you is only one. Death. Your heads will fall before tomorrow. immediately sentenced to death. Kubla Khan ordered that his noble blood was not poured on the earth and was exposed neither to the sun nor to the air. He was then wrapped in a carpet and trampled by the horses of the winners. something important here. Your story will be transmitted from father to son, from generation to generation. Don't forget us. Come back if you can. The long journey back had begun, and I, motionless on the ship, was observing the coasts of China slowly disappearing on the horizon. A deep melancholy pervaded me, perhaps the omen, or even more the awareness, that I would no longer return to that place. I was comforted by the idea that once I arrived in Venice, I could make my adventure known, just as it happened to you. Dear friends, who found yourselves at my side in this long and fascinating journey, surrounded by a magical atmosphere of sounds and words.